Hi, what I'd like to talk with you briefly about is this. In the news right now has been the coup in Honduras. Well, I don't propose necessarily to take you into a history of American relations with Honduras and the specifics behind why the coup took place, but what this reminds me of is our earlier history of intervention in the Caribbean. One has to go back, for example, to the Spanish-American War, 1898, which was, to a large degree, an American intervention into Cuba to bring an end to Spanish rule there. And in the aftermath of that war, which was fought ostensibly for Cuba's independence, the United States established a protectorate over Cuba in what was known as the Platt Amendment, which was added to the treaty that we negotiated with Cuba and which was put even within Cuba's own constitution, which gave the United States the right to intervene at any time to defend our interests, not theirs, but ours. And this began a pattern of American behavior in the Caribbean that persisted through at least the 1920s, until Franklin Roosevelt established a good neighbor policy in the 1930s only to be resurrected again uh, by President uh, Kennedy uh, with the Bay of Pigs and then LBJ in the Dominican Republic. So there's really been a long history of American intervention in one form or another in various nations in the Caribbean. After our intervention in Cuba, the United States intervened in Nicaragua. To, uh, we also intervened in Honduras. We intervened in Panama, the Domin uh, Dominican Republic, and more. Probably one of the most important aspects here was Theodore Roosevelt, who established what became known as the Roosevelt Corollary to the Monroe Doctrine. This was in response to what took place in the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic had had a history of rather poor government, and the government had gone deep into hawk to European banks. Roosevelt was concerned that European powers, or one of the European powers behind those banks, might use this as an excuse to intervene and establish even a base in that country. So Roosevelt, to preempt that, established the Roosevelt Corollary to the Monroe Doctrine. Just a reminder, the Monroe Doctrine, earlier in American history, established a two spheres doctrine that uh, we would stay out of European affairs and asking the Europeans to stay out of affairs in the Western Hemisphere. And what that meant in practice was over time that uh, we could intervene in this hemisphere, but we would not, we would take exception to any intervention by any other power in the hemisphere. As Charles de Gaulle later put it, this seemed to be an unfair practice on the part of the United States, but such it was. This Roosevelt corollary to the Monroe Doctrine established an important principle, and, th and that was this. Roosevelt said, to paraphrase the corollary, that if any nation uh, was operating in this hemisphere according to what he called essentially civilized rules, and they had nothing to fear from the United States. But if some country in this hemisphere, and he meant by that specifically the Caribbean, engaged in what he called chronic wrongdoing, then the United States, as the civilized nation in this hemisphere, would have the right to intervene in that country and set things right. 
Well, that establishes a long pattern of behavior for the United States in this hemisphere. As I mentioned, a number of protectorates were established in the Caribbean. The Dominican Republic was one of them. Several others. President Taft intervened in Nicaragua. President Wilson intervened in Mexico. So all three presidents in the Progressive Era engaged in one form of intervention, usually with the Marines, in one country or another in Central America. Essentially what this meant was the United States became the policeman in this hemisphere, especially in the Caribbean. Self-appointed policemen. Policemen, of course, are called upon to uh, get people to obey law and order. And normally, policemen have to be well-trained to do this. Well, the United States, of course, appointed ourselves as policemen, no one else did, and established this as our sphere of influence, which we kept for quite some time. Now, looking at the current crisis, it's worth asking, will the United States go back to this early pattern that it pursued for quite some time in this hemisphere? And my guess is under the Obama administration, probably not directly. We're, we're very unlikely to send in the Marines. We're very unlikely to practice gunboat diplomacy, as we did on a number of occasions. Things have changed. The world has changed. Now, it is worth noting that Obama said that the deposed president was still the president of Honduras, that he had been democratically elected, and that it was illegal for this coup to take place. That's a pretty strong statement. That is, in effect, at least a verbal intervention in what took place. The question is, what will he and the administration do about this? if anything. And my guess is that they're going to work with the Organization of American States closely in this regard. Exactly what will come out of that is hard to say. Uh, it appears though that the coup met with wide-scale support within Honduras because the president, Zelaya, was trying to get a referendum passed which would have enabled him to become president for more than one term. Uh, the, the Honduran Supreme Court itself regarded this referendum as unconstitutional. So it's a complicated situation, to say the least. Will the United States, as I said, intervene militarily? I doubt it, seriously. Will we use diplomatic pressure? I think Obama has already signaled that we will use diplomatic pressure. Will we use economic sanctions? I don't think so, unless the Organization of American States is willing to go along. And the OAS is no longer just an American playground. You have significant powers to deal with now. Brazil is a growing regional power. It's a very different situation than what Roosevelt or Taft or Wilson had to deal with. So my best guess is we will do what we're doing. Diplomatic pressure, perhaps economic sanctions, but not direct intervention. So I thank you for listening to this and hope you enjoyed it.